Hey dudes, dude the builder here. And in this episode of Zig and Death, we're going to be taking a look at atomics in Zig. And uh, atomics are an alternative to using uh, the mutex and the read-write lock that we saw in the previous episode. Uh, basically, uh, it's a mechanism that uh, allows you to perform certain operations in an atomic way, as the name suggests. And that means that uh, the operations are happening in an all-or-nothing fashion. So they, they have to complete um, in, in an atomic, indivisible way. And uh, that guarantees that while the operation is occurring, another thread can't um, intervene uh, between steps of the operation. Um, and that's why you don't uh, require a lock in, in this situation when you're dealing with atomics. And those guarantees are uh, controlled at the hardware level by the CPU. Uh, these are specific CPU instructions that allow us to perform these operations in an atomic way. And there's a level of control that you can have uh, for these operations via an ordering, what's known as an atomic ordering, and we're going to be seeing an example of that. What we're going to be doing in this uh, example is uh, basically implementing what's known as a weight group. And this is, as I, as I mentioned here in this uh, comment, this is just an example. You, you shouldn't have to do this because there is a, a weight group in the Zig Standard Library, it understood under stud thread uh, weight group. But this is just an example of how we can use atomics and a weight group is, is a good uh, context for that. And basically a weight group um, is a structure that allows us to uh, spawn uh, multiple threads. And each time we spawn a thread, we add a member to the weight group. And then uh, we don't have to uh, join the threads. We can detach from those threads and use the weight group uh, as a signaling mechanism to wait for all the threads to finish. So how can we do that with atomics? Well, as we have here, uh, basically the primary field of this weight group struct is the members field, which is uh, of type atomic U size. Um, as you can see, uh, atomic here is one of these uh, generic functions in Zig that takes a type and returns a type. And uh, this allows us to basically have atomics of any, any type that we want. But usually we, we see most of the use of atomics with simple uh, primitive types like numeric types and booleans. Um, which has a, an advantage of keeping the complexity uh, low. So what we're going to have here is an atomic U size, which is basically going to be uh, a counter of how many threads we, we have spawned. Okay, Here we have a simple little init uh, function that uh, initializes that members field with uh, the atomic U size type here using the init uh, function of the atomic uh, u-size type and initializing it to zero. Here we have a method called add, which basically signals that a new member or a new thread is joining this weight group. And uh, to do that, we have to increment the counter. And how do we do that with an atomic? And specifically an atomic that's a numeric type, we have this uh, fetch add method and what fetch add will do is it will um, increment uh, the, the value that's stored in the atomic. In this case, it's, it's a U size. And here we specify the, the amount by which we want to increment, in this case by one. And here is where uh, the ordering that I mentioned earlier comes into play. Here we're using um, an enum literal for uh, stud atomic ordering, which is an, an, an enumeration of orderings. And we are using here the acquire order. Usually you will see in atomic code that when we are um, doing uh, uh, what's known as a load, um, which basically is equivalent 
more or less to a read. We're reading this. We need to, the, the, the important part of this fetch add is the actual reading of the value. Okay. And in those types of situations, it's common to use the acquire uh, atomic ordering. And uh, the details of atomic ordering can be quite complex. I'm going to put a link in the description to, to, an, to a part of the LLVM documentation on atomics and ordering specifically. But uh, in a really uh, simplified manner, what acquire is going to do it's it's similar and that's why the name um, is is uh, acquire because it's similar to the concept of acquiring a lock okay so uh, in this case we want to guarantee that anything that happens uh, before uh, we're going to read this value um, it cannot be ordered reordered by the cpu by or by the compiler um, after we have to be able to see the values um, uh, finalized before we're going to read the, the the values stored here in this atomic and that's what we do with the acquire ordering um, and and this comes into play because precisely um, the the compiler and the CPU if there are no restrictions in terms of ordering they can reorder uh, these atomic operations in, in any any fashion they, they see fit to make the code as efficient as possible. Um, so that's why it's important to use these atomic orderings. Um, here we have next up an example of how we signal that a thread is finished and it's leaving the wait group. And we do this via this uh, done method. And here uh, we're going to use the fetch sub and in this case we're going to be using the release uh, atomic ordering okay because it's basically the mirror image of our acquire here when we add and here we are subtracting we're going to be using release okay and here we have um, the wait method which is basically what we're going to use at the end of our main function to wait for all the threads to finish. And what we're going to be doing here is a, a, a while loop. This is basically, uh, we're, we're spinning. This is a concept that's known as spinning in a thread. And, and it's when you have a, a, a loop that's basically uh, checking a condition as we're doing here with this load. And this isn't really an efficient way to do this. This is just a simplified example. Um, that's why it's important to use the data structures in the, in the standard library because those data structures uh, implement the, the most efficient way to do this. But here we are just doing an atomic load and we are using the monotonic uh, memory ordering and monotonic is a, a, a loose ordering. It doesn't have uh, really strict requirements in terms of the ordering of operations, um, unlike the acquire and release. It's, it's a more uh, relaxed ordering. And uh, because of that, it can provide better performance. And if you're, loop, you're using it in, in a loop, it's, it's a good option when you're doing a load but only if you don't have strict ordering requirements. In this case, we don't have strict ordering requirements because we're just uh, trying to read the value and compare it here uh, to see if it's greater than zero, okay? Now we can see an example of the worker function that we're gonna be using uh, in each of our threads. And the first thing that we see here is a defer with the call to the done method of our wait group. So we can guarantee here with this defer that once this uh, function ends, and basically that's when the, the, the thread is, is going to finish executing, it's going to signal that it wants to leave the wait group by calling the done method. And then here what we do is pre, uh, do a, a debug print when we start and a debug print when we end and we sleep for one millisecond in between. And in our main function, now we can create an instance here of our wait group and we make sure to uh, at the end of this uh, scope which is basically the end of main 
we're gonna uh, wait for that wait group to finish uh, basically all of its member threads have to signal that they're done and then main will exit okay here we have our little for loop we're going to be spawning five uh, threads uh, the first thing that we do is uh, try to spawn a thread uh, with our worker function uh, passing in um, our uh, current iteration as, as the first argument here and a pointer to our wait group as a second argument to the worker function. And after we have done that, we signal that we're adding a thread to our wait group as a member with the add method. And finally, we can detach from the thread because we will not be needing to join the thread to wait for it because we're going to be doing that via the wait group. And that's the end of main, basically. So if we go over to our terminal, and we do a sig build run, you will see that in effect we have um, our five threads here that start and then we have our five threads that finish. And if we run it again, you're going to see that the order um, is uh, non-deterministic, the execution. You can't depend on the order of the execution of these threads. But what you will see is that um, all five threads are indeed running, so main is waiting for those threads to finish via our wait group. And uh, that's basically the example that I wanted to demonstrate. Uh, the really important part about dealing with atomics is uh, this uh, the atomic ordering in relation to the different operations. And that, as I said, is quite a, an involved topic. Um, so I, I recommend that you uh, read about it. I'm going to put that link to the LLVM documentation that talks about these orderings. Um, it's not an easy topic to grasp uh, right off the bat. It takes some practice. Um, but uh, once you uh, master the, the, the concept of this atomic ordering, uh, memory uh, ordering concept, uh, you can make the most out of uh, the atomic operations in ZIG or in any other uh, programming language that has atomics, okay? So, I hope you find this useful. Dude the Builder here. I'll see you in the next one.